Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday. I hope you had yourself an amazing week. Like everything about your week was a dynamic in every possible way. That is my hope for you for this week. And as you know, my weeks are always super long, but good gracious, we've had a week. If this is your first time tuning into Conversations with Toy, it is not by accident. I don't believe that it is by accident. Listen, I am here just to give you the virtual high five that you probably needed and could not get. So with that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. You may be listening to this on your pod, you know, on your, not podcast, this is the podcast, but you could be listening to this on the treadmill. You could be listening to this while you're folding laundry, which is usually my expertise. However, and wherever you were listening to this podcast, thank you for tuning in. If you tuned in last week, we had a good conversation about mental health and the holidays. As we all know, we are getting to the nitty and gritty of going into full-blown holiday season. And what does that mean? That means we're going to be thinking about turkeys and gifts for those who give them, holiday celebrations, uh, company parties, family gatherings, and everything else in between. And this is the one of the most stressful times of the year. But before But let me say, so let me just finish my thought with that. So last week we talked about the stress that comes along with the holidays, the stress of trying to gather it all, the stress of just trying to, you know, do all the things that need to be done. And I gave a good suggestion and my suggestion is simply this, do what you can, do what works best for you. Don't allow yourself to get so overwhelmed because you're doing things that other people want you to do exercise your no muscles they work use them because i'm telling you first of all it's too expensive this time of year just to be doing any old thing that's first of all then number two while you're trying to people please other people it just never works out in your favor because you're giving everybody else what they want and you're not getting anything in return and i think we need to get back to the place where we give consideration to people i'm all for that But doing anything that overwhelms you, do not do. I highly recommend you not doing because it's just going to leave you feeling depleted, right? And the state of mental health as it is today, and as much as it becomes increasing, like now it's popular to talk about having mental health, right? Or saying, you know, I'm struggling with this and that. And I am so all for that, right? But in the same token, I just want us to do what we have to do to take care of ourselves. And sometimes that means not going to a a function. And how does that look if you're married? Like, let's say, for instance, if you're married, me and my husband been married for over 10 years now. And so now you, you, you've been married and let's say you don't want to go to his family functions, or let's say he doesn't want to go to yours. I get it. Especially around the holidays, you're going to want to spend together Christmas. You want to spend together, but if it truly goes beyond your mental health capacity, I would rather find a way to do something maybe earlier with your spouse and letting your spouse go over to his family's or you go to your family, do whatever works. I get that we have this traditional sense where we want everything to be traditional down, you know, the middle where the couples get together. And if you have children, you take the kids over to whomever parent's house and you go scrolling over from one house and going over to the next. That's beautiful if you have a situation that warrants that. But don't get so stuck on tradition that you're willing to put your mental health in the back burner just for the sake of tradition, right? And I'm not saying just because somebody like the family members are difficult because on my side of the family and my husband's side of the family, we have some difficult family members, right? But... At the same time, having difficult family members is only a small part if you're still dealing with something that's literally pushing on your mental health. That means that you and your mindset cannot come together because you're stressed or overwhelmed. You may go over to an in-law's house where they're basically tearing you down. I saw on TikTok a story where a mother-in-law was basically taking food from the daughter-in-law. So what does that mean? She felt like the daughter-in-law was too big. So she was just snatching food from the from the daughter-in-law or only allowing 
telling her to eat certain things. See right there, I don't even know if that's about mental health or me just always wanting to square up with people, but I would definitely be like, I know you didn't take that good chicken wing out of my hand for Jesus. Like I know you didn't do that, but these are the type of strange off the wall, ignorant things that happen. And so if you put yourself in a position all the time for the sake of tradition, the sake of my marriage, the sake of, I don't want to hurt aunt so-and-so because we always go to aunt so-and-so. Listen, even if that's your mom, my mother is going to have these expectations that I need to show up. If you're not able to find another way, Hey mom, not this year. I really just want to lay low this year. I don't want all of that has, you know, fuss, or I just want to do a, B and C, or I've decided to get together with my friends, whatever it is, find it. So we talked about that. If you didn't get a chance, listen to that episode. But while we're talking about mental health and you know, we talk about mental health all the time. We talk about self-care. I'm going to say this and say this once because I'm getting sick and tired of feeling like we all have to keep speaking up for Kanye or giving Kanye a platform. Now I'm not giving him a platform. I'm going to switch to support according to regular people. Kanye West is out here saying things that are just ignorant, rude, and inconsiderate. I'm not going to go through the list of things that he said because I don't agree with them. But let me just say this. There are plenty of people who have bipolar. There are people who are manic. There are people who have all these different things. And it doesn't mean that you can tie bipolarism to being racial or being ignorant, right? Everybody that's bipolar is not ignorant and, and just inconsiderate. Everybody that's dealing with a mental health issue doesn't come off and they're not just considerably mean and, and, and arrogant. I think the, the reality is, is that he is not the poster boy, poster boy for mental health. I'm not negating his mental health. I don't know enough about him personally to speak on his mental health. I do see what I'm seeing, which definitely is suggestive of um, someone who, um, someone who is struggling with their mental health, right? It definitely is very clear that something is going on, but I can't really go on, on, on record and say, well, this is what it is. And he needs to do that. Like I'm not his doctor. And so I can't speak on that. But what I will say for the rest of people, rest of us, my mother always taught me that whatever's on the inside is going to come out. And so if something's not on the inside, it can't come out. If racism isn't there, you're not going to make a racist comment or an ignorant comment or a comment that's considered rude or any of these other options because it's not in you. So let's just be very clear of labeling him and using him as the poster boy to allowing everybody to get a pass because there is no passes in this type of situation. Kanye West is wrong. It is what it is. And that's it. For the rest of us that are fighting our demons every day. And why I say demons, I mean the things that we struggle with every day. Now you may be like, oh my God, mine isn't a demon. Okay, well put your name on what you would like to call your issues. The things you struggle with. Mental health, lack of self-care, feeling like you don't have enough time, uh, feeling like you're always failing. Whatever word you would like to use for that, insert it, right? And find ourselves finding better ways to handle us right? Because as much as you may have on your plate, you got to find a way to, to work that a little bit better. And what do I say by that? What do I mean by that? I know that I have so many things that I have to do, but I also know there's times when I'm overwhelmed because I've overloaded my schedule or I'm taking on things that don't belong to me. I'm trying to fix cousin so-and-so over here because she called and she's needing some assistance. Listen, you better learn to let people know that you're not able to help them right now. And what does that mean? You can say, listen, I can listen to you, but I cannot offer advice. I'm in the middle of my own struggles, but I, if you need a listening ear, I can do that. And what does that say? When they come to you and they're asking you for help, that just simply means, hey, I cannot give you any type of assistance. I can't give you a word. I don't have any advice. I do want to be there for you. So if you need just a listening ear, I will. And make sure that if you're saying that to somebody, refrain from speaking. When they're done, just say, hey, are you all done? I'm so glad. Did that make you feel any better to get it out? Like those are things that you want to say. Prioritize yourself, what your capabilities are and what other people's expectation. Because I believe in my whole heart that people mean well, but they'll put their whole life's expectations on you. 
They're so used to you solving their issues. They're so used to you solving their problems. So they'll come and dump on you. Then you're wondering like weeks later, days later, months later, while you're feeling the way that you're feeling because you've taken on someone else's baggage and they've dumped on you. And now you have no way of releasing that. Be clear on that. There are days when I am strong as an ox. And so somebody can come to me and I could talk to five people and one day give them advice and it wouldn't bother me. Not one iota. Then there are times when I am overtaken and listening to someone else's advice causes me to then take their advice, bring it into mine, or I'm not able to just say, okay, that is that. And we kind of move on. This is the realness of dealing with mental health. This is the realness of dealing with life. You've got to be honest about where you are. You've got to be honest about what it is that you can or cannot do. And I feel like sometimes we feel like we have to be the ones, we have to be the ones that gives them this advice. We have to be the ones that does whatever. And you don't, you don't have to do that. So be clear in that. I got so sick over this past weekend. You remember I said I was going to go all these media events and I was going to relax and I was going to do all these things. I did go to two events that I was, you know, had already agreed to because I hate, I legit hate having to last minute not go to something unless it's an emergency, right? So after I made it to the two events that kind of felt like I needed to be there, I ended up getting sick and had the worst ear infection of my life. Now, I haven't had an ear infection since I was a little girl. My mama listens to the podcast. She can affirm or deny, but I have not had an ear infection since I was a little girl. And so as an adult having an ear infection, I honestly thought my ear actually would have been probably preferred if it would have just fallen off because the way that it felt before I got some medication and some, and seen my doctor, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. I mean, I couldn't even watch the Eagles played against Dallas this past uh, Sunday and I couldn't watch not one second of it. I tried, I really did. I had all intentions of watching it, but the way my head was set up, uh, with the pain and the way my ear was doing the most, I could not thank God for my doctor who was able to get me in so that I could be seen and got me everything that I needed. And I am on the men's not 100%, but I am on the men's. Now, some of the things that I really loved about not being able to do much, I love the quiet. I love the quiet and I love the rest. I did do some little baby things from my computer, but not by much because I really, 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 really just enjoyed the quiet and the rest. Now I had to smooth my schedule quite a bit for the couple days of this week, because again, I wasn't really up and I wasn't really doing anything. And so, yeah, I had to switch my schedule and shout out, shout out to the PRs that don't give you an issue because you need to switch your schedule. Any PR that has ever worked with me knows that if you give me something, I'm going to knock it out the park, right? And if I tell you I'm going to be somewhere, I'm going to be there, but life happens, right? And with life happening, I had to switch some things or not go to some things, which rarely, and I mean, absolutely rarely happens for me. Nine times out of 10, I'm probably the first one there, last one to leave when it comes to something. I'm always going to fulfill whatever obligations that I feel that I have created or have. That's just who I am. And when it comes to doing things, if I am writing a review for it or writing up something for it, I'm going to give it to you within 24 to 48 hours. But I will say this, in October, I placed no media days on my calendar. And that meant I wasn't going to be at anybody's functions on certain days of the month for October. And what I think I'm going to do for November, excuse me, I'm sure there will be a lot of events happening in November because it's right before Christmas, blah, blah, blah. But I am going to go back and put more dates on my November calendar to block and unless it's one of my dream collaborations, unless it's one of my dream companies that it just is one of those things where it would be too hard to not go to, I am going to block, block it off. And what do I mean by dream collaboration? If it's a dream collaboration, and especially if that dream collaboration comes with some money that I feel is a good uh, relationship, then I'm going to ignore that block. But outside of that, my block days are going to stand. And I realized how much more joyful, how much more peaceful, how much more less stress I have had. And it is everything. So this rest made me think about the PRs. Also, 
I'm going to talk about PRs for five seconds. I need PRs to recognize that sometimes the ask of what they're asking for can be a bit much for what they're, what they're giving. And so this also came up and there was an influencer drama that had happened a couple of months ago. And it really made me think it really did. It made me think about my relationships with certain PRs um, and, and not even certain. I would just say all of them. There's not one PR where it made me question certain things and ways in which I move. Whenever I am not in Philadelphia and I go to other PRs, not necessarily as close to Philadelphia, like maybe New York, um, out of state, I've gone to LA and California and different things a million and one times. The way that PRs handle things outside of Pennsylvania, I should say, is super dope. The way that it honestly should be held. They're giving you something. They're taking care of your needs. They're next, making sure that you get paid and you're good. Now, what an interesting thing I found out was that uh, in, in Philly, at least, some of these PRs are actually prioritizing certain people and then paying them. So that means, let's say you see a hundred of us at an influencer event, right? What I actually found out recently was that there were some who were actually getting paid to be at such events. Now, I'm not mad or dismayed by the fact that I wasn't one that was asked to go to something and got paid for it because I'm very particular about what I give of my time. But the particular PR that this had was involved with this, I was taken back. I was extremely taken back because I was like, really? That's interesting. And so it made me level up. And let me tell you how. If you are a blogger like myself, if you meaning you have a page that you are mon you know, monetizing, you are doing your thing. Like for me, I blog about four to five blogs per week. And so on there, I have the options of putting things on there or using my social media, again, as a paying wall. Be selective of who you allow to be on your pages because your pages is real estate. Now, there was another blogger who I absolutely love and respect who told me this a while ago. I think almost when the first time I met her and she was like, listen, stop giving this particular PR your real estate. So I didn't understand what she was saying. I understood it, but I didn't fully comprehend it. And then when I seen the situation take place, I thought to myself, I've really got to be really selective of which PR I allow to use my real estate. Anybody that I place an event and I place that on my front page, that has to help me in some way, right? Because if it's not, then I'm going to have to be, you know, say no to some of these invitations. Now, unless they want me to come review it and it not necessarily go like maybe I can put it on my blog, but not on my social media or on my social media, but not my blog, like negotiating for yourself and learning your worth, I think was overall the lessons I kept going over within myself while I was down. What is my worth? I have 1,001 people reaching out to me all the time. And I'm like, yes, thank you for the invitation. But sometimes it's going to be thank you for the invitation, but I am at capacity. Thank you for the invitation, but I'm not even interested. Thank you for the invitation, but blah, blah, blah. Like it really is going to have to come down to really considering my needs, what it is that I need to do, what I want, and what's going to work out best for me. Because let me just tell you, I make a lot of money on a lot of these social media platforms. Let me just tell you this, without putting my money out there, I make money on every social media platform. There's not one that I don't make money from. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I'm making all the money. What I'm saying that is, is that because of it, I have to be very peculiar about what I'm doing, how I'm moving and what makes sense. So if you are someone in this field, please be very cautious about who you give your real estate to your website, especially when you own it. Like my website is not free. My website costs me money to maintain. Um, I have to do a lot of work to keep it what it, you know, doing what it needs to do. So again, being very clear about what it is that I'm allowing to do or allowing to happen. is just something I have to make sure that I'm always about. All right, so I got a question that was sent to me via email asking me, how do you break up with your friend? Now, I did cover this a little bit, I believe, in a couple of uh, podcasts before, not in detail, but we just talked about it in general about, you know, when you have a friend and everything is going fine and then all of a sudden your relationship goes left, 
So I'm going to be very specific in this answer. Friendship breakups hurt the absolute most. It's almost worse than a a relationship breakup because when you're with a friend, you, you let your guard down. You don't have the romantic part of it. So you really are just coming together because of support. You love them. You have a mutual bonding relationship with them, whatever the case may be. So when you go and you feel the need to break up, I feel like you should definitely figure that out and, and understand your why. Why do you feel the need to break up the relationship? You know, do you feel that the relationship has run its course? What does that mean to you? Um, all those different things you want to ask yourself that because it's going to be innately clear that you want to be very sure of why you're breaking up. If you've had situations where you felt like your friend over and over has not been there for you, ask yourself, do they have something going on that's preventing them from being there? Two, you might recognize that this has always been the ebb and flow, meaning you have always recognized that your friend could not be there or just chose not to be there for you. And for whatever reason, you might have accepted it or allowed it to continue. And now you're at a point where you've like, I'm done, right? Understand your why. Because when you decide to break up with your friend, your friend is going to object. Your friend is going to tell you things like, well, you're the same way, or I have this going on, or I'm not obligated to you or whatever the case may be, right? All the reasons why you probably should break up. But breaking up with a friend is going to be hard. And so be clear, it is what it is your goal is. Again, breaking up is hard no matter what the situation is. So I want you to be clear on that. Um, some people decide to allow natural, the natural progression of their relationship kind of fizzle it out. Meaning you've noticed that your friend doesn't even call you, doesn't call to check on you, doesn't text you. You don't really hang out. You're not the really the hangout type. Um, you really don't do anything for each other's birthdays or major holidays. So you can go weeks or months without even speaking. And some people just allow that to kind of fizzle out, like let that continue. Allow yourself to get to the point where, again, you're just like, well, we're not already talking. We're not already dealing with each other. So we'll just let it be. Some people allow that. Then there are the people who have a conversation to attempt to see if it will work, if they can try to work out their differences. So they may have a conversation and that could be a, something that you do too. But you, again, knowing your why will lead you into the path of what makes sense. If by talking to them will bring you to an understanding, then all means do so. I would definitely say don't argue with this person, meaning don't get into a heated battle. Don't get into a, a, a fussing and hollering situation because it's not it's not going to mean you any good. It's not going to mean them any good. And not that they have to learn from the situation because like, what is that? You don't have to um, be a martyr for them to get, to get the lesson, right? You're not the person that has to establish that. But what I will say is take your time in understanding the situation. I, for instance, know that there are at least two situations, three, maybe three situations that I will eventually have to let go. And it's not going to be easy. Again, it depends on each situation where you let the natural progression of the relationship kind of go on its way, or you say something, or you kind of have a conversation that leads to either an understanding or not. That friend, hopefully if they're a decent friend, will just say, listen, it's over. We've won our separate ways, or we've come to the point where our relationship has just made a sour turn and it's just time to move on. Can you outgrow a friendship? You absolutely can outgrow a friendship. Uh, I think you can outgrow a friendship sometimes quicker than you can outgrow a romantic interest. And this is the reasons. As you change, your thought processes change. You should be growing and, and, and changing every single day. My friendships that I've had for over 20 something years, even they have had to change because I'm not the same person. I realize now I have a, some new friends that have come into my life in the last couple of years. And I've realized now the type of support that I need is kind of hands-on. And I don't mean somebody has to do something for me, but I'm saying the relationship has to be tangible for me. Like I need, I don't know if I need or I like or I want, but my friendships now, these last couple of years, you know, us making sure that we call each other, like, 
We text each other all the time. We check in with each other. Hey, let's go out to dinner really quick. Let's go grab a drink. Like, let's go and talk. What do you need? How can I support you? And I realized that when I realized that according to the relationships that I've had before, where it's hit or miss, or you don't get a call, you don't get a text. I might not call. I might not text. There's a lot of things happening at one time. And so I realized how much richer my life has been by having a set of people that I can just do all those things with. Right. I could call them. Uh, we can hang out. Um, they support me, me, the person, and not only when it's beneficial to them, right? Not only when it's beneficial to them or beneficial to know me, but just genuinely, I'm just making sure you're good. Somebody that can just check in and say, I just want to make sure you're good. Me as a person, as an individual, top tier friendship, top tier friendship for me, top tier. And I will stop the world and do anything for them, anything, because it's that good. That's the type of relationship that you should have with your good friends. So take your time, consider your why, know going into the situation that your friend most likely will not agree. They may even counter that with something. I would suggest you listen. This is as much as you want them to hear you. You also got to hear them. There could be something that is fixable, meaning that it's two people who are struggling with the same problem and it can be fixed or it may be that you two have realized that, listen, and you don't got to break up on bad terms, which means I don't wish any ill will towards you. You don't wish any ill will towards me. I want to see you flourish and, you know, may God be with you. And then you just kind of like do the peace sign and you're out, right? You don't got to talk about that person to other people. I have realized in my big old age, I'm 41 now. I used to sit around talking about anything and everything, right? But I've gotten to the point now where I'm just listening to people talk about the same thing, the same problem by which they can control, like they can control certain parts of it. But every year, every day, every time we go to talk about something, you're talking about the same thing. And I'm just sitting there saying to myself, Lord, please quicken them, quicken them that they get the lesson so they can move forward and not just to move forward because I don't want to hear it, but move forward so they can experience growth like experience some sort of growth because you can't be talking about the same folks from 20 years ago. You can't be talking about the same people from 10 years ago. Like the more that you talk about something, it reveals where you are. I rarely speak people's names, rarely speak people's names. And I've had dealings with people from different areas of my life that were very traumatic. They were very life sustaining, a lot of different parts, moving parts to it. I rarely speak their names, rarely say their names because at some point, once you start going through the healing process and you start to grow, you just, you realize like how some things are just simply mundane. And what that means is, is like, eh, the energy is just not there. I, I don't need to give them the energy of something gone wrong or whatever the case may be. Now that's when you get at peace. You you can see people that you know you ain't really particular about and you can be cordial or you can not be cordial, but you ain't really acting a fool or to feel like when you go to see them, you got to text somebody and be like, I was just at so-and-so's house. Like, I don't know. That's just me. So as I'm getting older, I just don't have that type of energy because when you realize like how much life is to be lived, I, I know everybody says that when you turn 40, it's like, you know, a whole nother life, but it is. You know, people live to be about 80 years old or above, some people younger, some people older, right? And so when you get to 40, you start seeing like, what am I going to do with this next half of my life? What am I going to do with this half of my life? And if half of my life means I'm still talking about something that happened 10 years ago, nah, son, I'm not doing that. If half of my life means I'm not out here traveling and going to see the world, nah, son, that ain't me. I don't want to do that. Like I want to do for the next half of my life the most beautiful things that are going to make me feel absolutely accomplished, right? That doesn't mean I'm going to accomplish all the goals, but anything that I put my hands to do, I just want to do the best at what I can, right? So I don't want to waste my energy. I don't personally want to waste my energy on folks that ain't thinking about me. Now, let me put that into perspective. Do you know how many people have passed away and there are people who are still alive who have all this, the people that are dead have power over them and they're alive and their other person is dead. I know that was deep, but the people that are dead, that have no 
relationship. They're not alive. They cannot make or break. They cannot tell you yes or no. And we give so much power, right? And then think about the people who are alive, the people we supposedly live for. We put all of our energy to get their approval for them to like me, high five me, please see me, all these different things. And for what? Why are we putting this energy for other people to see us, for other people to to like us, for other people to want to entreat us? And you're giving this much energy and you're wasting your life. I'm trying to raise my kids. I even tell my kids, and I know this is to the parents listening, you might think this is wild, but I even tell my own kids, they are going to do things and say things that I'm not going to be in agreement with. I don't want them trying to shelter their life to make sure that I agree with them. I want them to know that if they're making a decision that they truly believe in, they should stand firm on that even when I disagree, not if I will, but when I do. I have been teaching them that not to be disrespectful in that, but they have to learn that they're not going to please me. And if they can learn that they don't have to please me, maybe they will apply that to their mates. And I tell them that don't please me. Don't please the person you're trying to be with the person that you are with learn to do things because you feel solid about yourself as an individual that you're going to stand on that decision, regardless if you stand alone. That's the type of children that I'm raising. And so with that, I had to learn to become that type of woman. I had to learn to be that type of woman because even if my friends don't agree with something that I 100% stand on, I don't need an amen corner. I don't need them to high five me and agree with me every step of the way. It'd be nice if I felt like it was right, right? It'd be nice, but it's not necessary. And if there's a decision that I'm making that I 100% will stand on, and if I can 100% deal with the consequences of, which is another thing I've been teaching my kids. When you do something, you got to 100% take the consequences. You're going to take that L, you're going to take that consequence. You got to take all those things. And if I feel that strong about something, I don't need the amen corral rallying up behind me and making me feel like I'm validated because this is what's going on. This is what I'm choosing. Sometimes in our friendships, we do way too much to get our friend who is at her house, at his house, struggling with their own decisions. They can't got time to carry you and them, but you hoping your friend. I had a friend who wanted a pet and didn't get a pet because that friend, the other friend may come by and visit. And I thought to myself, that is not, that is not it. That is not it. That is not it. And no disrespect to them or the relationship because there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not me. I'm not going to sit there and want a pet that I have financial means to go and get, but I can't get that pet because it's going to make somebody else uncomfortable who doesn't even visit but four times a year. If that, no. And that's the point that I'm making. Sometimes we do things for other people that don't make sense because they don't agree with this. So we don't go with it. We don't go along with it because again, we want them, we want them to highly and rightly behind us. And that's not okay. It's not going to happen all the time. It's not going to happen all the time. Sometimes you're going to have to stand on something 100% regardless of who stands with you. But when you believe in yourself and you believe in what you're standing up for, you'll do it. And I mean that about that, that, that amen corral, because I'm telling you that amen corral that you keep looking for. And this is the reason why, let me tell you why you don't do stuff for other people, because while they're telling you not to do it, they could be very well doing the same thing they're telling you not to do, or they're just mad because you were the first one to do it. I have seen friends discourage another friend because they thought of something that was mad dope, mad cool, but because they didn't think of the uh, situation first, they were like, oh no, you shouldn't do it. And guess what that friend did? They didn't do it. Do you not know I've watched that same friend do the suggestion that they told the other person, no, don't do that. And thus, this is why you can't learn to live for everybody else because can't nobody put blow your candle out until it's time. Y'all keep wanting everybody to light your candle, but the real flame comes from you. And we have got to stop allowing everybody to put our candle together because I'm telling you, if you let them do that, when they get ready to blow out your candle, they will because they're going to stop supporting you. Then there goes your dream. 
They're not going to, you know, they'll support a stranger, but won't support you. And there goes your dream because it was dependent upon other people to keep your flame burning. Child, people will buy a candle and forget that candle in the back of their mind, or they will put that flame onto your candle and think that they're doing something and forget you on the by and by, because that's how people are wired. It's just the truth of of the matter. Take the time to put into the energy, into the atmosphere, into the, all the things of doing what works best for you because it's best for you. For instance, anything that I've ever had done medical, I've never asked my friends or, um, how do you feel about that? Even my husband, as much as I love and respect him. And I think a decision to have children or not to have children is between two people, because again, these two people will be raising them. When I made a decision that I did not want to have any more children, After that third one skated in there, I told my husband, I love him, but I wouldn't want to have his child or aliens child. And I didn't allow that decision to be made for him to say, well, I don't know how I feel about it. My life was at state. I literally had a blood clot in my brain from my third child. And I did not want to die having a child. Like I had way too many close calls And if you've ever had a blood clot in your brain or blood clot in your body or anything like that, you know how serious you come so close to death when you have a child. And I had just decided that this last baby was going to be done for me. And as much as I respected my husband and as much as I wanted our relationship to work, I had to make the decision that I did not want to have any more kids, not even his baby or the next. I've heard so many people tell me, well, what if you break up? And you get married again and somebody else wants you to have their child. That couldn't have been my mate coming to me because he would have already understood. I don't want another child. And I meant that. I put that into faith into fruition. I came to every appointment with my paperwork that showed I had signed off to get these. uh, First, I had got my tube side. And then later on, I ended up having a full hysterectomy. Do you know, I showed up to every appointment, every last one, like here, do y'all remember this? Make sure when we go in there, cause I had a C-section, make sure when y'all go in there, y'all tie them tubes up. I even made the man put the tubes in a container and let me see him. I did not want to have anybody else's child. Now you might say I'm a little extra and I'm okay with that. Me, call me extra baby, right? That's fine. But I knew what I wanted. And I didn't need an old uh, amen corral. And sometimes you just got to learn to make a decision that works best for you. That could have been the end of my marriage. What if my husband would have came to me and was just like, yeah, no, no, I want more, more kids. I was prepared. I might not have wanted it. I wouldn't say I'm not, I wouldn't have been sad about it. I wouldn't have gone through the breakup mode, but I just knew in my heart, I didn't want to go through that again. I didn't want to have my life on the line anymore. I didn't want to sit up there and go through childbirth and wonder if I was going to see my kids because that happened to me a couple of times. I didn't want that. And so I was willing to accept the consequence of my decision and knowing that I might not have had his, his support. Now, prayerfully, thank God we was on the same page. We was like, yes, I mean, I would have taken out my own tubes if I could, but it was just a decision that was best for me. And so you got to learn to sometimes make the decision that's best for you. Even when people don't agree, even when people don't understand, even if your friend supports you or doesn't, because I found in some situations, your friends that don't support you all of a sudden want to support you when they see you get on, right? Oh, I see you doing your little blog thing, which I've had that happen 20 million times. Oh, I see you doing that. that, that. So, Hey, when is the next time I can go and hang out with you and double, you know, do a, B and C. They're not really supporting you. They just want what they can get from you. It's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. Support yourself. Do what works best for you. Put yourself out there for what it is that you really want. Understand that relationships are going to change. You are not going to always get a situation that's going to be favorable. Meaning your friends may not align with what you're aligning with. You might have to make some serious changes. You might have to leave, you know, a relationship. And maybe at some point you both can grow and come back together again. There's no way of knowing, but when you believe in yourself and you believe in whatever it is that you have going on, stand firm in that, stand completely firm in that. So let's go over the steps one last time. One, make sure that you understand your why. Find a time and a place to have the conversation. Make sure that you make the conversation about you. And what I mean by that is instead of saying statements like you always, or you never, Say, I feel unsupported when you don't do A, B, and C. Or, I feel unsupported in these examples, and this is the way that it made me feel. 
being in control of your conversation is going to matter. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have the opportunity to blow up. doesn't mean that you're not going to be upset or that even the simplest of conversation couldn't go left. But you want to remain and act in the most emotional intelligence that you possibly can. So you're staying calm. You're having the conversation. You understand your why and you're making it about you. Give firm examples of the way that you feel that you were treated and the ways in which you felt as if you were not supported. This will help to again to guide the conversation and hopefully lead it to the result that you would like. Also have a very good, clear conscience about what it is that you expect to get from the conversation. Sometimes I believe we think that if we tell the other person how we feel, we explain all the things that we're expecting the other person to make huge, enormous changes. Go into the situation that knowing that a lot of the speaking that you're doing isn't going to be for them, that they may not even be in the position to receive. This conversation is more about you finally speaking up for yourself and getting out on paper or from your paper to the person's ear about how it is that you feel and being able to say what it is that you need. And it's completely okay to say, these are the type of way that I feel supported, or these are the type of ways that I would like to be supported. Again, the expectation is for you to be able to say what you have to say, and it may not be in the persons that listening, they may not have a desire to change. They may fight you. They may, and I don't mean physically, we pray that it's not the case, but they may decide that whatever it is that you're saying holds no true value and you have to be willing to understand that and to accept that. So this week I experienced one of the worst ramen places here in Philadelphia. It has to be the worst here in Philadelphia. I love ramen, right? And I'm not talking about the ones that you just put in the refino from the the cabinet the ones that were like what 10 cents a pack from college although I'm not against it I'm not gonna act like I've arrived and I can't eat regular ramen but I was such a desire because I wasn't feeling good this week I'm like oh let me just order some ramen I got some uber eat money some gift cards so I'm gonna go ahead and order some ramen and I'm gonna feel good about it I'm gonna eat this food I'm gonna feel amazing about it wrong I went to go eat this ramen and within minutes I kid you not I was in here thrown up and very much sick. This has never happened in any type of history of me eating food at all. The last time something like this happened, I might have been pregnant. But let me assure you, there is no, and I mean absolutely no such way that I would be pregnant at this point. Um, So I knew that that was not the case. And so when I got sick, I just knew that had to be because of something that they prepared, the way in which they prepared it, whatever the case may be. So now I have to basically put myself on a situation where like when it comes to ramen, I got to stick to the one that I know. And did I consider going to the ramen place that I knew about, even though it was Uber Eats? I did, but for whatever reason, they no longer use Uber Eats. And I believe they use a different company that I wasn't familiar with. But let me just say, I will make my own ramen at this point before I even attempt to eat anything else because the way that I got sick was violently throwing up and I never want to experience that ever and again. I think the biggest part of it is when I said something to them, they're just like, well, a couple people, you know, have gotten sick. Sir, that's not, <laughs> I don't know. That's not a flex to me. They'd be like, well, you know, we have a, such a small number of people who get sick. You know, you'll be all right. Like, that that's not that's not at all the type of response that you should give somebody so I'm going to be in the process of trying to report them because you know I don't expect everything in life to go you know perfect or think that everything is in a perfection state but I do believe that if somebody has gotten sick off of something that you've prepared you would want to find out more answers than just or give more answers than just you know well we have a couple people that's gotten sick That's definitely, in my opinion, not the right answer. So as far as weekend plans this time, I'm hoping to have a bit of a little bit more low key weekend than last time. If you've been listening to the beginning of this podcast, you know that last weekend I had, you know, had tensions of having a low key weekend and then went into a weekend where I discovered I was extremely sick and I haven't had that type of sickness in such a long time. This weekend, I am hoping for another relaxed weekend, but this actually, you know, come to pass to come into fruition that I can actually have a relaxing weekend and enjoy my family and just like get things done in the house. 
it is becoming a lot colder here in Philadelphia and I'm sure in surrounding places as well. And so, you know, trying to switch everything over from summer clothes to fall because, you know, at this point, I can't deny that the, you know, fall weather is here. You know, you have the extreme cold in the early morning and at night, and now you're having cold area, you know, cold uh, temperatures even throughout the day. So I need to switch over everything and get everything prepared and ready and just really enjoy, again, try to enjoy the weekend because those weekends be lasting but a split second. So I hope that you are going to have a great weekend. I hope that your week, if it wasn't good, that you can just sit back and relax and enjoy your actual weekend and find ways to prepare for your early next week. I don't know about you, but this would be the perfect time to start the process of, you know, food prepping or meal prepping if you want to give that a try. Also, this is the perfect season to put a couple things of soup. You could be a single person who's making soup for six people and put it away for like an extra, you know, rainy day or one of those days when you don't feel like fully cooking. But now you can just kind of thaw out the soup, warm it up a little bit and you're good to go. This is that perfect season. Again, it's also again, crock pot season. You can put a lot into the crock pot and make one, you know, meal for everybody that, you know, can eat and enjoy it. But whatever you do this weekend, I hope that you do find some way of renewing yourself. This means doing the things that you really like to do. Now, I know you might have to play Uber parent and you might have to play all these different roles. But one of the best roles that you can play is being authentic to yourself. And that means treating yourself with the same dignity and respect that we sometimes want from other people. But we're not always willing to give ourselves. Take yourself out on a date. Find some time to rest. Do an activity that you love research a new activity to do again maybe the next couple of weeks whatever it is do that because that is a form of self-care i love you send all kinds of energy towards your way and i hope you have the most amazing weekend this has been conversations with toy and i will talk with you soon Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.